Hello everyone and welcome back to another Minecraft update video for 24W12A. This is a snapshot for 1.20.5 but of course it includes experimental features from 1.21 and that's where we're starting. In this snapshot new advancements have been added to the game. Let's go through them one by one starting off with entering a trial chamber. Let's move inside of the structure. Hey, and there it is, Advancement Made Minecraft Trials Edition. Oh, now this appears in the Adventure tab, and as you can see, there's some more advancements related to the new features here. Let's go ahead and scrape one of these copper bulbs. We get Wax Off as well as Lighten Up. Of course, in these trial chambers, we can obtain a trial key, and when we use this on a vault, that'll give us the Under Lock and Key Advancement. Here we have a room with a breeze spawner, so I'm going to pop on into survival mode and we're going to try and kill the breeze with its own wind charge. So this means I've got to deflect one back directly at it, it's going to be tricky. So in the past five minutes I've learned that this is insanely difficult. We can see the wind charge coming my way, it is so tricky to get the timing right, but this guy has just one heart left. Hey, there we go. Whew. Okay, that, that took some effort. Yes, a blowback was the name of that advancement. And that took me like eight minutes. And yes, I was in survival, but I had resistance. It is really, really tricky to kill them that way. By the way, that one gives you 40 experience points. I think it's the only new addition to give you XP as a reward as well. This next advancement requires the mace and doing over 50 hearts of damage, which means falling from really high up. Now, the creeper here obviously only has 20 health, so I'm curious to see if it'll actually work on a mob with less than 50 health. So let's see how good my aiming is. Oh, first time. Love it. There you go. Over overkill. Deal 50 hearts of damage in a single hit using the mace. And of course, we have just learned that doesn't require a mob that has more than 50 health. This next one requires us to be near a crafter when it crafts a crafter. Uh-huh, look at what it just made. Crafters, crafting crafters. That one is on its own little category here. The last one is a part of this group of them. And it involves blasting yourself up into the air by seven blocks with a wind charge. So this is obviously going to require some fine timing. That felt kind of... Oh, that's got to be the one. There you go. Who needs rockets? Use a wind charge to launch yourself upwards seven blocks. I should point out in the patch notes it says eight. But there you go. It says seven in game. So obviously the majority of these were related to the trial chambers and the contents within them. I mention this because trial chambers themselves are going to be a little rarer to find. They're now going to generate spread out a little further from one another than in previous snapshots. We can actually see the values for these changes. Separation went from 8 to 12 and spacing went from 32 to 34. And if you think that's a bad change, fear not because the cartographer now trades a new type of map. Here it is down here. The trials chamber map, you can see the icon's got a little bit of distinguishing color. We're, of course, going to go ahead, do that trade, and check this map out right here. That, my friends, is what signifies where the trial chamber is. And, of course, it's pretty close by in this case, so we can fly directly over to it. And then around here, I guess we would dig straight down. But, of course, I am here just to show you what's going on. Let's go into spectator mode, go underground, and there it is, the trial chamber. I should also mention I traded with these villagers in a couple of different village types and all of them seem to be giving me the ocean map first and then when you reach the next level you get the trial chamber map. Alright there's more cool stuff coming up but quick sub plug from me if you're not subscribed to the channel and you want to keep up to date with these snapshots and Minecraft changes hit that subscribe button down below. Next up, the Heavy Core, which I don't think we've seen the last of. There have been some suggestions and hints from Mojang that this might be receiving more features in the future. One of the things that you can do now is actually waterlog this block, and previously it could be popped off by water. So flowing water doesn't do that, and neither will flowing lava. It will go around the Heavy Core. A tool of choice has also been assigned. This is the pickaxe. This is the tool to now mine it within a reasonable amount of time, but it still looks like it's going to take, oh, I don't know, 10 to 15 seconds. And when it breaks, it drops itself. 
Its blast resistance has also been adjusted. Uh, since I didn't test this before, though, I don't know quite what the change is. But look at that. It survives a TNT explosion. And it didn't destroy any of the blocks around it. I think that's because the TNT was sitting on the block, which might be an interesting quirk. This could also very easily be something that gets patched out. Yeah, look at that. It's preventing other blocks from being blown up. Well, what about entities? For science. Oh, no, they don't survive. I'm going to guess this will get patched. And on the topic of the heavy core, one of the devs said that the likelihood of getting this from a vault was 2.2%. And I forgot to track my source here, so I don't have a tweet on the screen to show you. Next up, the changes for Minecraft 1.20.5. A lot of this stuff is technical, and as you'll see, it's sort of laying down some foundations for some of the changes we just saw in 1.21. As you'll see here, there is a trigger for crafter recipe crafted. You can specify a player, a recipe ID, and some of the ingredients too. And if you happen to not know, a trigger is like a detection of something taking place in the world that can be interacted with via commands. And so in this case, this and the following were used for adding the advancements. The other one is fall after explosion trigger. The explosion here being the wind charge, I assume, you got the player as a parameter, starting position, distance, and the cause of the explosion. So all of those parameters can be heavily customized to create some amazing experiences for map makers. And we are seeing a ton more changes under the hood here as well. There's a new entity type tag for sensitive to smite. The new wolf variants have been added into sub predicates, which is a similar setup for the cats and the frogs and the paintings. And that means that some of the files have been moved around a little bit to be more consistent with other things in the game. Now, a lot of this stuff is really technical. So if this is your wheelhouse, of course, go and give the article a read for yourself. There are a couple of things in here, though, that are really interesting, like the ability to toggle tooltips. I think that explains this cryptic tweet that we saw earlier in the day. Like, whatever is going on here, one thing's for sure, there, there is no tooltip on the cursor. So as it shows in this example, you could actually hide the enchantments tooltip specifically. And there is a new item stack component for food that explains this mysterious tweet we saw earlier. Can you eat inventory management for breakfast? Look at this, breaking a block, picking it up, and then of all things going ahead and eating the obsidian. So, have you ever wanted to eat a diamond block? That is now entirely possible. <laughs> and don't you wish you could have more than a stack of diamonds? Well, yep, yeah, that's right. I'm currently holding 99 of them. This is because there is now a max stack size component here, and the max stack size is indeed 99. And if we try and go any higher, it doesn't let us. And our third example includes using an arrow as a tool, because now you can define it as being like a tool. Uh-huh. This is like a pickaxe. And the arrow has a custom durability of 16 uses. I think map makers are going to have a field day with this snapshot. I also want to say thanks to Missode for providing us with the commands you just saw for these new custom features. So back here on the website, you can see the max stack size. There's also max damage, fire resistance. They keep opening up more and more of the game for customization. And so with that, a lot of new tag types, like tag lists for incorrect for a particular tool. And the food that mobs eat have now been separated into their own tag lists. So you can customize this and make it so that rabbits, for example, could eat different types of food. Now, there are quite a few bug fixes in this snapshot, but most of them just relate to things that broke in the last couple of snapshots. And that basically wraps up my coverage of this snapshot. So if you enjoyed it, be sure to leave a like. Thanks for supporting the channel, and I'll see you next week with another one.